I'm joined here today with Rakim Noble of Box Story, former Southern Area Super Lightweight Champion. He actually won the belt with a spectacular knockout. And um, uh, he's here today because um, after episode five of Prince Patel Speaks, he didn't like some of the stuff I said. He, um, he thinks, in his opinion, Jake Paul is basically um, not a good fighter. He's making a bit of a mockery of, of our sport. And I emphasize our sport because we are participants in the game, or former participants in the game. And um, he, 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 he doesn't justify how Jake Paul Jake Paul's fight to go in and the platform it's on. So I'm going to hand you over to Rakim now and he's going to tell you why he disagrees with Jake Paul and why, in his opinion, his opponent and the platform he's on isn't good enough for the level he is. So of course, we're in the office, we're here to talk business, we're here to discuss the real deal, the nitty gritty facts about the situation at hand. Do you know what? I'm not going to lie, I like Jake Paul. I think Jake Paul's an entertaining entity that we've got in the boxing world right about now. But do I think he has the potential to become one of the best fighters out there? No. I think that's a fairy tale that's been sung by his multi-million pound media behind him. If you give any boxer a million pounds in their budget, they can be as great as Jake Paul is. If you give me a million pounds, I would be great. You've had not even a fraction of a million pounds and you've done some great things. So I think Jake Paul's just a guy with money He's not top three guys who weren't meant to be there and he's living off that for the time being. What I will say is um, not everyone has the package Jake Paul has to offer. When I say the package, I mean he's a very charismatic guy. You wouldn't have a string of um, followers. I think he's got over 100 million followers on every platform combined. So that's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. He's got over 100 million people following him. Not every boxer would have that. You could give some boxers 20 million, they won't get the backing he has. They won't have the support he has because he has what I would say is the it factor. He has the X factor. He's a very charismatic man. He brings bums on seats, which is what a lot of fighters fail to do. As many fighters in the UK, good amateurs who have gone pro with small hall promoters, and they're told to sell tickets, etc. They couldn't even sell 100. Jake Paul selling... Thousands. He beat a pay-per-view record. He, he's, he's in the top ten pay-per-view records. Exactly, he's breaking pay-per-view records. So when The Rock says in the thousands and millions and upon millions. millions, Jake Paul's doing that. Jake Paul literally is doing what Dwayne was talking about 20 years ago. But let me differentiate between Dwayne and Jake. Dwayne is great. Dwayne was the great one. The best ever. And he's talked the talk, but he walked the walk. Jake Paul, like I said, yeah. he has, you said he's got the charisma, he's got the package, 100%. he's got the followers, he's got the backing. Yep. But what does that mean for his legacy inside the ring? What is that going to do for him inside the ring? Yeah, he, he's got a lot of fans, he's a very popular guy, but as far as the combat fighter, what is that going to do for him? Because when it comes down to the nitty gritty and putting on those gloves, it's him versus the other man. And he's 4 0 with four knockouts. 3 0. 3 0. With 3 0 with three knockouts. Gonna be four and over four knockouts when he knocks out Tyron Woodley, in my opinion. And um, uh, Jake Paul is is walking the walk. Okay. He's talking it and he's walking it. And the fight is that you're gonna say, oh yeah, but the, the 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 pedigree and the credentials and stuff of the people the people he's fighting, these are high level athletes. They're not your your standard. Um, import that you brought over to take a knee. I'm gonna... These are high level athletes. They're not used to losing. They're not going to take fights with the aim to lose. Okay, I'm going to check. Champion you has ego. See here. Champion does not like to lose. You're a champion. You're a former Southern Area champion. Yeah. You've you you've competed at very good domestic level in boxing. Mm -hmm. Did you like to lose? No. Exactly. Okay. I'm about to check Patel here because I'm about to hit him with some facts. Jake Paul's first opponent was Ali Gibb, a YouTuber. This man had no business in the boxing ring. This man was fresh off the couch, fresh out of his YouTube room, fresh into the ring. No business being there, round one knockout. Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson, as we all know, was a long-term NBA player at the highest level. Nate Robinson had been retired for two years, 37 years old had never had any form of fighting professionally in his life. Once again, this man had no business in the ring. 
Now let's go on to. And Wipington. He got wiped out. There you go. Because he had no business being in the ring. Okay, go on. Then let's go on to the final man, which is somehow the most credible in Ben Askrim, despite being 20 pounds over his last weighing weight, despite being retired for at least a good two to three years, despite being 37 years old, despite being a man that is known for being chinny, despite being a man that has the least striking ability in the UFC, came up against Jake Paul and was unfolded in, I think it was no more than 90 seconds. Once again, no business inside the boxing ring. And they got dealt with accordingly. They, as you got, they as, got dealt with accordingly. As you'd expect. As you'd expect. But but the same thing goes when you got guys like Campbell Hatton fighting at Owen Four on a pay-per-view in the UK on an Eddie mm-hmm. Hearn matchroom card. So how do you justify Campbell Hatton? You know why I can justify that? Because John, Campbell Hatton is fighting a guy that actually knows what he's doing inside the ring. Campbell Hatton is actually fighting a guy that has been around boxing for more than three months before stepping into the boxing ring. That guy lost ten times. Yes, he did. And that's a terrible record to be versed for the pay-per-view. But at the end of the day, I can, call, I can call that guy a boxer at the end no. of the day. Is Nate Robinson oh. a boxer? Can you ever call Nate Robinson a boxer? He's a high-level athlete. Ooh, I didn't ask for high-level athlete. High-level athletes, yeah, do not like to lose. It doesn't yeah. matter what you like. No, it's no, what you're no, capable no. of. It, it, he, you, so you believe this guy who doesn't like to lose went into a boxing gym to practice what he was doing. Do you believe he didn't do that? There's reality and there's what you're actually capable of doing. I agree with that. And he was there's not a- capable... Of what he was doing and any means. Yeah, he's a high level athlete. Does that mean he can go and play football? Does that mean he can play baseball, hit home runs? Does that mean he can do free running? No, it doesn't. Because he's trained. When you've got a guy game. like Dwayne Johnson that we spoke about earlier, Dwayne could do it all. Dwayne was a high level American football player. He he was a high level professional wrestler. There are many, many people. Brock Lesnar, he's a former professional wrestling world champion. He's a former UFC world champion. There are many athletes who can do this. Michael Jordan played Major League Baseball. Do you want space And he played... He sucks. And, uh, <laughs> he got booed off. Did Tom Dorgan get a tennis racket and hit that ball? Because he was missing so bad. He played professional baseball and he played very high level basketball. Yeah? Athletes like myself can play many different sports. Yeah? Because most athletes tend to be great athletes and that's what the NBA guy that Jake Paul fought was he was a great athlete okay do you know I can agree on that if you are a great athlete and you've conquered one field I would believe you can go to another field and have some success but spending three months in a training camp after having never participated in any boxing is not enough time to tell whether you are going to be someone in that sport do you know what Nate Robinson might actually be a hidden talent he might be able to come back with a year of training and knock it out of the park but from a three month training camp, just taking the opportunity to fight on the under kind of a Mike Tyson show, he was never going to be great from that. He was never going to be great from that. Yeah, but how many other fighters on their like building phase? Like, look at look at Tommy Fury. I'm going to use Tommy Fury as an example because they're in the same way. There's a little bit of needle talk going on with them too. He's fighting guys, in my opinion, who look like they're diving on the floor. That's my opinion. Now, are you a boxer if you've been in the gym two years? but you're willing to dive on the floor in a professional fight. Can no. you justify Tommy Fury's opponents? I who have like nearly 200 losses between six of them. Do not. The majority of pretty much all of Tommy Fury's opponents, I can't justify those. But what I can say at least, but is that they but know what they're doing that's in the That's happening room. on UK BT Sports. So how do you justify that? Listen, I don't sanction BT Sports. What they put on their television stations is what they put on their television stations. But let me just pull to attention, Tommy Fury's last opponent was a 2-0 kid yep. who legitimately tried to win. Very limited in what his abilities were, very limited in what he can do, but he gave it a go and he made a tough night for Tommy. How would Jake Paul do against an opponent who actually has some minor capabilities of coming to win? Because all three of those guys, Jake could have fought all of those guys on the same night, one after the other, and uh, had absolutely no issues with that. Because Jake Paul is that damn good. What do you he think would happen? Good. What would That's happen? what it comes down to. What would it comes happen? down to Jake Paul having the abilities <laughs> to be able to knock guys out. If Ali Gibb... The he's, U- been, he's been blessed with the power of the punch. If Ali Gibb, the YouTuber, versus Tommy Fury, how would that go? 
If Nate Robinson, the basketball player, was Tommy Fury, how would that go? If £20 over the weight limit retired Ben Askren, who can't punch for nothing and is quite chinny, versus Tommy Fury, how would that go? I think it would be the exact same I, story. I tell you why we will never find out how that will go because I don't think Tommy Fury's promotional team have the financial backing to bring them stars over. And emphasize the word stars because that's what they are. No, no doubt they are stars. That's why they're breaking pay per view records that have been set by fighters, respected fighters, multiple time world champion fighters. Jake Paul is selling pay per views. Not even tickets, he's selling pay per views. Like I said, selling pay per views, being a marketing tool, being an image, yeah. having a mass following. What does that do for you inside the ring as far as greatness? Okay. As far as greatness, he's breaking pay-per-view records. Boxing greatness. Boxing greatness. Well, he's, ba- he's breaking boxing pay-per-view records. Accomplishments, titles, okay. credentials, 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 credentials. Credentials. Well, time will tell. He's got a... Would you agree Tyron Woodley's a, a, a step up from what he's been fighting? Well, to be fair, Ali Gibb... I think anything is a step up from Ali Gibb, so it's quite hard to say. <laughs> no, but who on their debut fights a killer? Who on their debut versus a guy from the couch? I would love to fight. Like, I think I fought a guy in the couch on my debut. <laughs> on, um, a, in your call. I think it was 0-3, went 90 seconds. I, I'm sure that guy put up a tougher fight than Ali Gibb. Maybe. But, it doesn't change the fact that Jake Paul has only started his journey. When he goes into the next part of his journey, we'll tell. He's got Tyrone Woodley. Now, the thing is, what I have to respect Jake Paul about is he's not beating around the bush having these, these made-up fights against Owen 20s and Owen 50s. He's fighting guys where you can sell the fight. It's not like your Campbell Hattons who are fighting Owen 10s on a pay-per-view, on, on a pay-per-view straight co-main event. He's fighting guys who... They're coming to win with their, lim- with their limited abilities. They're coming with a background of high-level sports, apart from Ali Gibb. Um, and um, they're, they're, coming, they're coming to win. They're attempting to win. It's not like a journeyman who's allowing himself to get beat. And also while I'm at it, on the weekend, there was a TikTok against YouTube um, uh, show. Yeah, no, Deji fought in that one. Yeah, and got beat. Yep, Again. Stopped. Again. Um, uh, and basically... Deji's also a victim of Jake Paul. Um, uh, and yeah, basically... Having to fight. Yeah, white collar, I'm not sure what everyone call it. But um, the point being is, he's, um, these are people... The, the person who lost in the main event got $5 million. Guaranteed. Now, I'm yet to make $5 million in my career. I think you're yet to make $5 million in your career. I think combined we haven't made $5 million in our career. There's something these guys are doing that we need to take notice of. I'm not saying from a marketing standpoint, from a visual aid standpoint, they're not doing the right things on social media by putting themselves out there. No, they got the best marketing and the best online strategies to get themselves promoted. Yeah, no doubt about that. But I'm talking about inside the ring, boxing-wise, credential-wise. If you put any one of those TikTok versus YouTube guys, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, all of the Pauls, in a fight against a top 10 British fighter, Top 15 British fighter. just fought Floyd. And how do you do? He went eight rounds. Against a retired, an oldened, drained out. Old but gold. Old but gold. World to weight fighter in an exhibition fight. Yeah. Come on. How many fighters has Floyd knocked out before eight rounds? I can name you some world champions he's knocked out before eight rounds. When was the last time Floyd ever had a knockout in his good days? Against um, uh, Conor McGregor. Against a fighter. That's uh, a world champion in Conor McGregor there. A credible boxing opposition. When was the last time Floyd Mayweather knocked out a credible boxing opposition? Victor Ortiz. And that feels like donkeys years ago. And that was a bit of a controversial one too because Victor was looking at the ref and... Anyway. Hatton, you could say, 2008. Hatton was the last clean knockout he got victory. Alright, let's just wrap this up. Who wins? Jake Paul or Tommy Fury? Do you know what, right now I'm split on that one. They're both very early in their career. I couldn't tell too much who would win. But just from going by the opposition and who was actually operated at the smoother level, I'd probably say Tommy Fury would win that one. Just because he's actually fought boxers and he knows what to do when someone fights back. 
Jake Paul's never had a man hit him back. We don't know what Jake Paul's been doing in sparring. Don't we don't know. been doing in sparring. Okay, we don't know that either. But based on what I've seen in the ring, I've seen a lot of blemishes in Tommy, in Tommy Fury. Jake Paul, on the other hand, he's dismantled whoever's been in front of him. What would Tommy Fury have done to the same three opponents? I don't know. And we will never find out because his promotional team haven't got the financial backing to bring them guys over. So we'll never find out. And what I would say is, um, uh, you say, oh, Tommy Fury's actually fought boxers. Just because you go to a boxing gym and you punch a bag and do a bit of pads does not make you a boxer. Just because you're licensed as a professional boxer, is what you're basically saying as well, yeah? Because that gig guy was licensed as a pro, so was Nate Robinson, so was um, uh, Ben Askren, and so will Tyrone Woodley. You're basically saying they're not professional boxers, yeah? The guys that Tommy Fury's been boxing have not been professional boxers. Okay, let, let's... If we want to make a definition of what a professional boxer is, let's just take it for this. Guys that have been in the boxing environment for a number of years and understand what it is to go through the process of weighing in, training, hydrating, blah, 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 blah. Let's say he's versus guys who understand what that is. We do that because yeah. we are high-level guys. But the guys that Tommy Fury's been fighting... Who with Owen, Dighty, whatever. They ain't rehydrating, okay, 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 thinking okay. all that stuff. Okay. They're there for one reason. One reason only. Take out the hydrating bit. They know about keeping themselves in relatively good shape, showing up to a fight, and doing rounds. The minimum. They are accustomed so to So Nate Robinson wasn't doing rounds in training. Ben what? Askren doesn't know about doing rounds and rehydrating. Ben Askren does not know about rehydrating. Not in boxing. He definitely rehydrates. But not in boxing. Rehydrating, yeah, ben, hydrate, ben can rehydrate, coming at 20 pounds over, he rehydrated a bit too much. But as far as the system of boxing, going to the gym, going to the fights, manoeuvring, counter slipping, hooks, rolls. I didn't see no slipping that. with the Tommy Fury guys. There was no slipping with these guys that he, that he fought. Well, they know what it is. They don't, they don't, they don't, that's, <laughs> they know that's what, the thing, they, they don't know what it, know what it is. is. They don't know what they it know is. Not, they know what it is. The guys that Tommy Fury's been fighting does, do not know what bobbing and weaving is. They do not know about moving their head. They don't know about footwork defense. They don't know about blocking. All they know about is a little bit of journeyman money they're going to receive at the end of the night. They're effectively buying all okay, I've been can, through this before can, many times. I can tell you that. I can tell you this. They know more about bobbing, weaving, moving, and technical ability than Addy Gibb did. I can promise you that. <laughs> Probably right there. <laughs> Probably right there. But they're low level athletes. They are low-level athletes, and they won't even make, in their whole career, what one of Jake Paul's opponents have made in one fight. But once again, we've got to move away from what we're making financially and extrinsically and momentarily to what is actually being done inside the ring. Because you can have some of the best Knock fights. Out. You can have some outs, 3 and 0, 3 KOs. Everyone tried, everyone's got... Mike Tyson, can you list me his first three opponents? I can't name those three opponents. Mike Tyson, probably the most famous boxer alive today. And the man who runs Box Story doesn't even know his first three opponents. But so let's, you, give, let's give I, Jake Paul a break. I can yeah? tell you one thing about He's them. He's fighting high-level athletes. I can tell you one thing. They were boxers. They were boxers. They were fighters. How do you know they didn't find them in, 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 in the streets of Catskill? How do you know this? Because look at the knockout clips. They look like pretty... Girthy men. They look like pretty strong men. And I don't think they would just found out the sheets of cat school. I don't think they're Logan cool. Paul is a girthy geezer. Have you seen his physique? Turns up in better shape than every opponent Tommy Fury's fought. And emphasize Logan, the one who fought Floyd Mayweather last weekend. Now, I think I think I think I think I think it's over. I think the referee stopped this contest. I think I've done enough. I think I've done more than enough. As we yeah. can see here, Prince is throwing in a towel. No, no, no. In his own <laughs> he's throwing in a towel in his own defeat. He's a, he's a noble man. He understands what it is. He understands what the game is here. Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul, he's here for the paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> he's here for the viewership. You know, he's got what he's wanted. He put up a good fight. He'll lift the fight another day. Well, it's the final... The final decision is down to you guys. Is it a split decision? Give your opinions in the comments below. Let us know what you think. I think I've comfortably explained how Jake Paul is not having absolute jokes as his opponents. 
I think I've, I've made it clear that Jake Paul has the it factor and can go very far. In my opinion, how far I think he can go, I think he was from the UK, I think he has an English title in him. I genuinely believe Jake Paul could win an English title. Do you know, I agree on that. I think Jake Paul could win an English title. Because if you gave any prospect in this country a million pounds and told him to go win a world or an English title with that training camp, I think any fighter would do that. He's got to be a heart to them. So I, I agree with you. Jake Paul would win. So you'd have to fight an actual boxer to, 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 to win that, right? Yeah, you've got a million pounds behind you. Yeah, you can fight an English level fighter. English okay. level fighter. English level fighter. English yeah. level fighter. Okay, okay. And as far as it goes. As far as it goes. You don't think you go further than the English. With the right matchmaking, we will see. But at this current point of time, looking at who's in the UK and on the world scene, I probably not. But we'll leave it to you to decide. Is it a split decision? Unanimous majority? Prince, Rack, you let us know in the comments. Peace. I think I won, man. <laughs>